Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land, Place of Binding of Isaac Adderith Plus. Uh, starting to build a little bit of a foundation. Yesterday's run started, well, the last run. Yo, we got that kid in play haircut. Uh, started excellent, ended weak, but was relatively strong the whole way throughout. Adequate speed, great rate of fire, okay damage. Rubber cement is fun. Not necessarily a huge boon for us, but fun. Uh, and, and Breath of Life is just, like, a wasted slot. <laughs> I might be ruffling some feathers here. Obviously, this is based on my own experience, but I would say that, uh, Breath of Life is, uh, kind of horrible. Maybe there are people on planet Earth who can use this item effectively, and if you're, uh, if you're one of them, I certainly don't want to you know, besmirch your ability to take advantage of this item. But for me personally, uh, uh, literally, and I've used Data Miner effectively. I don't know if I've ever used Breath of Life effectively in my entire existence. So that was a bomb for a bomb, and of course the bang the bang dicky and etc, etc, up jump the boogie. But what we're trying to do here is maybe get a black market, crawl space, anything along those lines. Really, early on in the game, later, bomb for a bomb, I will never consider it. I won't even do the Kid Rock parody. But uh, for now, bomb for a bomb excites me, it interests me, it gets the people going. Not really what we're looking for right now. When we just get a, a literal bomb for a bomb, but to get the possibility of a crawl space is worth something. Even though when you get a crawl space, the vast majority of the time you end up going, ah, a trinket I won't use. Speaking of which, we got a great trinket to begin with today. Ooh, this is what you, you, like, lesson one of what you should not do is back yourself into a corner with no space against these guys. Uh, but we, we got a little lucky and made it out of there. Um, Snot Tears as our trinket. I imagine it's worse than the Booger Tears item that's passive, but it's still, uh, as far as trinkets go, it's got to be at least B tier. And it's B tier in a fun way. A way that makes us a little bit more uh, offensively potent, so I enjoy it. We're actually, I think this is the first time I can really with confidence say that I had a great usage of Ace of Spades. Because the rest of the, or uh, it was Ace of Clubs, sorry, but the rest of the floor had a lot of opportunities for us to use bombs and try to get something of value out of them. And very few of them actually paid out with anything meaningful, but we did get a couple of Spirit Hearts up here. Oh good, Breath of Life is ready to go. Thank God. Now this guy, he's deceptive. That's what I was just gonna say. If you're standing in front of him, you're hoping he does his laser shot. Marrow, totally fine by me. Uh, and we'll head down to the next floor. We don't need to belabor the point with more analysis of how to handle Hush, I think. <laughs> At this point, uh, he's dead. Yo, we got like a Halloween costume right now. You guys remember every Halloween costume you've ever worn? At least every Halloween costume you chose to wear? I think I've discovered the root, by the way, and I'm not trying to insult my mom, she's a lovely lady. But I think I've discovered the root of why I don't like Halloween. My mom is a, she's a handy lady. No jokes, please. Uh, she knows how to sew, stitch, etc, etc. So for the first few years of me being like, you know, a child, that was old enough to go out for Halloween, let's go. She would uh, make my own costume, and I didn't have a whole lot of say in what I was going to be, right? So like one year, it's not the namesake of my name, it's just, you know, it's marriage of convenience, I suppose. But one year, I was uh, a lion. She stitched like kind of a, a mane and then like a, I'm trying to think of what you would just, like a caramel colored sort of body and I was a lion that was okay but I remember distinctly a uh, one year I was Dracula of course don't tell Robert but um, are we willing to go I guess we're gonna try but it's a little scary um, I remember distinctly I was in second grade and my mom got it into her head that for Halloween I should be little boy blue and even as I say that, I'm confused. 
Because I'm like, in my head, I'm like, you mean like little boy blue from the... Like the nursery rhyme? I don't even know what it, I've purged it from my memory. Little boy blue. And the man in the moon. Do not Google little boy blue. It gives you some weird pictures on the right side. It's popular English language nursery rhyme. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. But where is the boy who looks after the sheep? He's under a haystack, he's fast asleep. Will you wake him? No, not I. For if I do, he's sure to cry. So, I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. But instead, I got to be Little Boy Blue, who is a, I don't know, like a friggin' sheep herder from the 18th century or something like that. And I distinctly remember, like, not wanting to be it, but my mom being like, I want to make this costume. You know, you're seven years old, you don't have much of a say in the matter. For Halloween, I'm Little Boy Blue. And the kids at school may have poked fun a little bit. They may have said, what are you? And I said, I'm Little Boy Blue. And they said, what the frig is that? And I said, I don't really know, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, that's... I think that might have been the first seeds of discontent with my Halloween experience. Everyone else goes to school. I'm Donatello. I'm Leonardo. I'm Michelangelo. And I show up in this weird blue onesie with a hat that makes me look like Mickey Mouse from Fantasia. And I'm like, I'm... Leonardo and they're like no you're not and I'm like but I'm blue and they're like yeah but you're not a turtle and they're like okay just be honest and I'm like I'm I'm a nursery rhyme it has been argued that little boy blue was intended to represent Cardinal Wolsey who is the son of an Ipswich butcher who may have acted as a Hayward to his father's livestock but there is no corroborative evidence to support this assertion so just, you know, that's try busting that out when you're seven years old. I'm Cardinal Wolsey. <laughs> Even the teachers are like, who the heck is Cardinal Wolsey? Baseball player? Anyway, long story short. Took many years off from Halloween after that moment. Invincibility, please. Okay, no such luck. Um, keys, please. Keys, please. Keys, please. All right, keys, please. All right, fair enough. You got me. I just want a key so I can go to the shop and provide entertainment to the Hulkamaniacs out there watching the video, but apparently that's not allowed. Still a great run, but... After that, I didn't go to any Halloween-related festivities until I was an adult. And then I got uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Followed by... Captain James T. Wait, no. Captain Jean-Luc Picard. James T. Kirk has... Well, it's weird, because like if I asked you who was the first bald captain of the USS Enterprise, you would probably say Patrick Stewart. And you would be wrong-ish, because I'm pretty sure that William... <sighs> you fool. I'm pretty sure that William Shatner has worn a hairpiece since he was like 21 years old. That's not meant as an insult to William Shatner. You know, I, I've been bald since I was 19. I'm just saying. You know, I think you would be, uh... You'd be missing one. This is very, very, very scary. This guy could kill us in a heartbeat. So what I'm doing is basically trying to put him in succubus territory non-stop. Launch some, uh... Some chubs that hopefully get a little chewing done. I don't, I don't even want to get close. Thank you so much. And then just don't walk on the spikes. The damage we took back there was embarrassing. You don't need the penny. Don't even try. Even if there's a 0% chance I get hit, I don't want to even tempt fate. Maybe my controller will unplug itself somehow when I get over the spikes. It's not worth it when we have 55 cents. Now we get keys. No, no, no. Dangerous. Okay, thank you. Emperor, very, very huge. I really, really want to go to the shop. Just to be able to buy, like, a spirit heart. It's not about a deal with the devil. Like, if we can get our HP high, this run is going to be fine. We already have the damage. It's really just two bad circumstances put me in a dangerous spot. Ooh, that's horrible. Don't chase me, please. Don't chase me, bro. 
as an old dated reference to a viral video that probably now would give us, you know, a little bit more pause about our place as citizens in a Western society. Student shouts, don't, don't tase me, bro, and then gets tased. Everybody laughs, because he asked for something and then received the opposite. Now it would be like... <laughs> Welcome to the show! Star of viral video, don't tase me, bro! Well, I just didn't want to get tased, Jimmy. That's the what it really came down to. And then all of a sudden, what do I find in my side but two electrodes? Just goes to show you. Be careful what you don't wish for. <laughs> That's Jimmy Fallon. I actually kind of like Jimmy Fallon still, but don't tell anybody because it's you know if, if you express the opinion on the internet that you you, that you enjoy. Not I don't watch Jimmy Fallon's program. The only late night show I watch is um, Conan because I have self respect. But um, excuse. Oh, I hit the eye. I didn't even see it. It blended in in the in the darkness. But uh, I find Jimmy Fallon's attitude and demeanor relatively affable. Simultaneously, I will also say that I grew up on the uh, Saturday Night Live cast between the years of, like, you know, 2000 and 2005, so. Of course, I'm going to have a soft spot for the the Rachel Drax and the, the Jimmy Fallons and the... Okay, I'm going to give this a shot here. It's a great boss fight for us at the present point in time. The Anagastires and the etc. etc. We definitely want to go for Empty Vessel. We probably want to take Book of Sin so we actually have a useful spacebar item. And then apart from that, I mean everything's look is coming up Millhouse right now, of course. We just, we, we want to trade our HP away if possible. Hello. Dude, I'm playing Isaac 2. Yo. Isaac 2? Yeah. You got to teach me how you got that, that PR. Embargo. Oh, no, the embargo. The NDA. What are you doing in your Isaac run, Kate? I'm doing the Keeper. Mm, oh, first five, wow. First try, first clear, over at... Uh, Twitch.tv slash LovelyMomo. YouTube.com. Oh, there you go. I'm dying a lot. You're dying a lot in your keeper runs. Yeah. Not in real life. No. Yeah, you, you sound really good, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Relative, especially. Like, I, I went through the exact same thing. To to just be able to talk at all is a blessing. Yo, you drinking beer while you're recording this? I am indeed. Is that okay? Is that allowed? I don't know. It was probably fine until you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to put a special stipulation in the... Uh... It's just adult juice. Yeah, it's just adult juice. <laughs> Yes. For Do you want to order sushi? I'm streaming. I'm recording. You see the situation? It's a very conflicted situation. I don't know why you want. Uh, here's the thing. I think the streaming audience would find it funny if you ordered sushi. And the YouTube audience mm -hmm. would be mildly annoyed to incredibly offended. That Are you saying... Audience is I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when it comes to uh, non-content related things like that, mm. the Twitch audience is more open to it. In my opinion. I don't know what you want though. I would like a Yam Tempura roll. Yeah. And a tuna roll and a salmon roll. Oh my god. Just the basic tuna salmon maki. I think she was offended by my order because when she le when she left she said oh my god and then she she walked away with her arms crossed I don't know how to I don't know how to respond to that I got to say here's the thing if it came to and it, I've I know that I've said it for YouTube it's opened up uh, scrutiny when it comes to my sushi order, and that's fine. You expect that as a public figure. You understand that as a public figure. It's going to happen. This is not bookworm yet. You're going, if you're ordering raw fish, 
why are you getting a roll that's deep fried sweet potato? And I'm gonna give you the honest answer. I've been from Phoenix, Arizona, all the way to Tacoma, Philadelphia, Atlanta, LA. I've had nori, shirashi, and a crap load of maki, but I love the way sweet potatoes taste. At least in terms of deep fried yam tempura rolls. So keep on makiing, baby. I like the I like rice, thin layer mayonnaise, and a deep fried sweet potato. I don't know what it is. You know, Japan's got it going on when it comes to fresh fish, raw, served in a rice roll or just on top of rice. But North America's done some okay stuff with sushi that I can get down with as well. And I like to sample a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't even want to mention it because it's going to invite even more scrutiny. But sometimes when we order from the sushi restaurant, I get myself an order of chicken karage. You cannot get any more divergent from sushi than to order chicken karage. What's chicken karage? It's basically Japanese popcorn chicken. But it hits the spot. We've ordered from the place enough that, uh, you know, I've got the menu known like the back of my hand. I'm like a sushi sommelier. I'm willing to give it a test. Hagalas. It's only Depths 1, which is kind of surprising to me. Like, I thought this run was a little bit more powerful, but I guess we... It's not that it's unpowerful, but we have been, like, bereft of, uh... Advantages for part of it. Like, our spacebar item uh, only recently has gotten the chance to do literally anything to a spades. We'll pop it right now. It's well worth it. A bomb for five keys. And, uh... We're gonna go down to our curse room. And selfishly, I hope... Eh, why not? I hope that it's... Uh, Guppy's head. Still a possibility. Still a possibility. Still a... Po okay. No longer is it a possibility. Ace of Diamonds, <laughs> Ace of diamonds dude. It's so I don't know why I've looked down on Ace of Diamonds for so much. Look at that. It just did such... Incredible work for us right there, turning an opened red chest into a single penny we're unlikely to ever use. And here I am looking down on it, as if it hasn't done great work for us in the past. Plenty of time for boss rush, uh, if we want to, which, I don't know, we did it last time, but we've got a great run from an offensive standpoint. We might consider it doing it this time. Just want to make sure we've done our due diligence uh, on the rest of the floor here. Been to the shop. Let's double check. You know what? I'm willing to pay 15 cents for a random shop item. And it sucked really, really badly. Just unbelievably terribly. And we got a teleport card. So you know what? I, I'm just going to consider that we paid 20 cents in order to get the Hermit card. And I would consider that overpaying based on market value. But in terms of the actual effect, not that bad. Let's head down to the next floor. I'm going to take a sip of some juice. Can't believe I still have the little boy blue Wikipedia article open in the background. That was like a repressed memory for me. No wonder I didn't like Halloween that much. I mean, don't take this. It's not a story of, like, child abuse. Always, I'm wary about sharing stories about my parents because I actually... I don't even want to say in my opinion. I was raised, like, really, really well. My parents were always there for me. We're going to drop the, the super magnet. But, uh, you know, over 18 years, you accrue at least a few stories of situations where you and your parents disagreed. And if you tell it in the wrong light, it makes them look bad. You know, this story that I told about my parents, uh, or my mom for Halloween, really makes it seem like she wanted to make a costume, and then no matter what I wanted, it didn't matter. I was wearing whatever costume she wanted to wear. And that's pretty much precisely how it went down, but you can also see from her perspective, she thought it was like an opportunity to do something special for me, and, you know, we'd spend time together 
turned out to not be that much of a collaborative experience because, <laughs> you know, she just made whatever she wanted. But still, it's not. It, she was trying to do something nice, and uh, it hasn't created a great emotional debt for me as an adult. More of a funny story, I guess, would be the way that I would describe it. You know, but that's the way it is on the internet. You know, you you got to be careful with the stories, the stories you share, I should say, and. Uh, well, let's take a look here real quick. Trash, trash, trash. Uh, pretty, pretty much like 100% trash. I'm not even sure it's worth a spirit heart, but I took BOGO bombs, which are actually, you know, bomb bag, but we'll see. Because if you share a story that paints someone in a negative light, it's kind of unfair. I'm not inviting them on to share their side of the story. And moreover, the internet has like a hair trigger. Like, I'm sure there's probably one person typing up a comment right now where, you know, right after I said, like, she was trying to do a good thing, they're like, oh, so, like, an abuser could also be trying to do a good thing, but that doesn't mean that it's actually a good... And no, it's just like you're... Don't take it the wrong way. I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers, but you're kind of just, like, trying to be mad based on incomplete information. It's the same thing, like... And I've brought this up probably like 20 times. But whenever you see a YouTube video of a pet, it could be a dog being very cute. 90% of the comments are going to be like, this dog is cute. 1% of the comments, well, the other nine are just going to be like spam. But 1% of the comments are going to be like, you, when you looked the dog in the eyes, the dog took it as a personal threat and they, the dog was scared and it cowered and whimpered and you should be ashamed as a pet owner. Somebody should, like, they just, you, you got to be careful about what you share online because people get very, very passionate before they have the whole picture. It's like people who only read news headlines and never read the story and they get, you know, they'll, they'll share the story. This is not... So, basically, this is something I've made fun of Nick for, but I wasn't thinking of Nick when I brought up this anecdote. You know, I'm talking about people who will be like, Hey, did you hear about this thing? Shocking news. Guy who did bad thing gets acquitted. And then you read the story, and the story is like, Well, he and his lawyer hit a plea deal that he would do 500 hours of community service in exchange for, you know, the blah, 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 blah. You know, there's more nuance to it than that. But when you just read the headline, the headline is like, it's designed to hook you. All headlines, I don't want to put this the wrong way, but in some ways are clickbait. This was the worst room of all time. For my own performance. Genius. Okay. My brain is like running in overdrive. It's running in the friggin' 90s, dude. Trying to... Figure out how the heck we do this. Oh my god. I don't know. A little too much adult juice, as Kate called it. Or maybe that's the first time I've seen that room. Maybe it's the first time I've had that room without flying. Because we do have flying, but we need to give up one HP to get to it. Um, that room was like writing a calculus exam. It's a very weird time for, like, outrage. It's a touchy subject to get into. I can already guarantee... People on the internet, they have a hair trigger for cringe as well. You know, sometimes we have awkward moments on the NLSS where people are like... You know, 50% of them are like, I'm adding this to my cringe comp compilation as a joke. But then some people are genuinely like, this was very awkward. I'm literally dying. Like, my skin is crawling. And you're like, you know... I don't know if it's being older being just different, having been on the internet for a long time, having lived in the public eye for a long time. I don't get that awkward in public. Uh, at least, like, in the videos that I record. That doesn't really bother me. But, so I can get into touchy subjects like this, I guess because I have a... I have a confidence that I can handle it in a way that doesn't misrepresent myself accidentally. But I think outrage is in a weird place. I'm going to explain why over the next three paragraphs before the conclusion. Uh, people are online are madder than they've ever been before. A lot of that anger is about things that people probably should have been madder about before. Inequality, you know, sexual impropriety and abuse and stuff like that. 
Absolutely. It's good that that stuff is getting more attention. But there's also this dunk culture that I've talked about. Uh, and, you know, I'm not trying to, like, market my politics YouTube channel or anything like that, which doesn't exist. Just go to uh, YouTube.com slash Markiplier if you want to see that. I don't know. I had to throw somebody under the bus. <laughs> it's a joke that doesn't even make sense, but <laughs> I just had to choose a... I had to choose that channel, and I was like, quick, think of a, a YouTube channel that can uh, absorb four people going over there and being like, and I'll mention you in his video today as a joke. It's not like that. It's not meant as an insult. I just had to pick the first YouTube channel that came to my mind. If anything, it was more of a compliment. But um, there's also an element of, like, dunk culture that shoots first and asks questions later. You know, like, people get dunked on, and I think that, I don't want to say radicalizes people, but it, like, hardens their opinions. I'm just gonna, you know, we went through this floor so quickly. I'm gonna go back and check for some secret rooms and stuff. You know, and, and my opinion has always been, and again, I'm, I'm repeating myself on a video by video level here. I've talked about this in videos before, but if I ever make like a huge mistake on social media, I understand dunk culture. I would expect, if I had a horrible opinion, for it to be quoted. And then people be like, imagine having this opinion. Like, you get shamed for having a bad opinion. I understand that as part and parcel with the social media landscape. If I ever regress intellectually to the point where I'm expressing my real opinions on Twitter, I deserve that kind of treatment. But, if I ever accidentally screw up, I hope that you know, in advance, that it's coming from a place of good intentions and good faith. So instead of dunking on me, which, if I'm being honest, I'll probably take okay, but, and that's go for him, thankfully. I might get hurt and offended and then be like, well, anybody who agrees with this person, now I hate him, which I think is what happens a lot of the time. Uh, you know, just tweet me and be like, hey, nephew, this tweet is ignorant, and here's why. I will probably reply to you and be like, please explain to me in greater detail how it's ignorant, and if you make a good point, I'll be like, fair enough. That's my opinion on dunk culture, at least. You know, we got a lot of celebrities on Twitter that are deleting their Twitter lately for a variety of reasons. But w one of them, I think, is, is extremely sensible. And that's like, why would you ever want to be a noteworthy person on Twitter if Twitter is not directly related to your job? Like Michael Rooker. You know, Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy, who's in Cliffhanger, The Walking Dead, deleted his Twitter account. And for a second, I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of serious. And then I'm, literally a millisecond later, I was like, of course he did. Why wouldn't you? If you're a Hollywood actor, you want to keep Twitter open so you could be like, I'm eating breakfast right now. Nah, dude. Literally, like, the 1% chance that he says some incredibly dumb stuff is not worth the little thrill of the, the serotonin release that he's going to get. Or dope, or one of the neurotransmitters, right, that he's going to get from, uh, from making the tweet. Of course, I understand it. It's a, it's a weird time for expressing your opinion. I think what we're realizing as a society is that the vast majority of people hold one or more just awful opinions, and politeness has not gotten us many places. I'm a very polite person. Sometimes people in public, or, or in private even, express some seriously terrible opinions to me. Just god-awful opinions. I'm not saying, like, Donald Sterling level stuff, but I mean, like, some opinions that are truly horrible and just based on nothing at all. And depending on the person, if they're, like, a stranger, I'll admit, and this makes me a weaker person for saying it, but I don't go, hey, nephew, that's some ignorant nonsense. I just nod my head and go, like, yeah, well, like, agree to disagree. Anyway, I'm going to get back to my wife and leave forever and never see you again. So you keep believing this, you know, ignorant garbage and uh, whatever, you know? Like, I'll see you when I see you. But because I think, you know, the veil of politeness, whenever you get a bad opinion, or op an opinion that you very much disagree with, you just kind of go like, yeah, well, you know, everybody has their own opinion on things. You know, now some of these opinions are coming out on Twitter. And when it's determined that it's a terrible opinion, they go, this is unfair, nobody told me this in advance. <laughs> what I'm saying is political correctness... No, obviously that's not what I'm saying. 
I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's weird to be in the crucible. And I'm not even really in the crucible, but you know, it's weird to be coming up in this industry or having matured in this industry even uh, as all this stuff has gone down. I've been like, you know, tweets that people were making in 2012 are way different than the tweets people were making in 2018. 2012, people were like, I farted. Ha ha ha. And you're like, oh my god. <laughs> Simon Pegg just tweeted that he farted. He's a real person. And then in 2018, it's like, hello, I'm starring in Mission Impossible Fallout. Coming to theaters. This, you know, it's all, it's all corporate now. And for good reason. Anyway, thanks for watching. Easy win. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya.